Hello everyone, my name is Laura Modelli and welcome to Science for Education. Supporting teaching and learning in science education. In today's episode, we are going to learn about the engine of the cardiovascular system in mammals, the heart. And we will be using this pig and sheep hearts from Carolina Biological Supply. You can use our affiliate link in the video description below to get some for your learning activity at school or at home. They sell high-quality preserved specimens with natural lifelike appearance for educational use. Also, I have created activity sheets as a companion for you to get on board with me throughout this dissection video. You can get this dissection video through the link in the video description below or you may visit scienceforeducation.com. Here we are using the pig heart because the size and structure are close to the human heart. The size of my heart is like the size of my fist. And by doing this dissection, perhaps we'll have more understanding of how our cardiovascular system works. As the engine of our body, the heart works as a pump, usually beating about 60 to 100 times per minute. With each heartbeat, the heart sends blood throughout the body, carrying oxygen from the lungs to every cell. After delivering the oxygen, the blood is deoxygenated, meaning it lacks oxygen, and it returns to the heart. The heart then sends the blood to the lungs to pick up more oxygen. This cycle repeats over and over again, and for the typical heart rate, around 70 to 75 beats per minute. This means the cardiac cycle or heartbeat would be 0.8 seconds. So every time you feel or hear your heartbeat, that means your heart just finished doing a cardiac cycle. So how does this blood travel in and out the heart? The arteries carry blood away from the heart to the whole body, and the veins carry blood into the heart. Alright, let's put on all of our safety equipment and dig in. Here I have two hearts. You probably already guessed that the larger heart is the pig heart and the smaller one is the sheep heart. I am using both hearts just so that we can compare the size and also the external parts of the sheep are still complete compared to the pig heart. The heart contains four chambers, the left ventricle, the right ventricle, the left atrium, and the right atrium. And we'll see these chambers when we cut open this heart later. Over here, we have the apex the pointed end of the heart from the left ventricle. These ear-like flaps, left and right, are the auricles made up of muscle from the atriums. On this base area, we also can see the superior vena cava. This is the vein that returns the deoxygenated blood from the upper body to enter the right atrium. And then the branch over here is the inferior vena cava where the deoxygenated blood from the lower parts of the body enters the right atrium. We will get into more detail when we cut the heart open, but from the right atrium, the deoxygenated blood goes into the right ventricle and then comes out of the heart here. This is the artery that delivers the deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle to the lungs. This is called the pulmonary artery. On this specimen, the pulmonary artery was cut short, but before it was cut, it had branches as well, because they take the blood to the left and the right lungs. Once the blood is oxygenated in the lungs, it comes back into the heart. On the side over here is where the pulmonary vein was, but our pig heart specimen's vein here has already been cut very short, so let's look at our sheep heart. This big vein delivers the oxygenated blood from the lungs to the left atrium. The blood then moves into the left ventricle. 
The aorta is the large artery that emerges from the left ventricle and the function is to carry oxygenated blood to the whole body. The branch of the aorta here is the brachiocephalic trunk. The heart is made of muscle and needs oxygen just like other muscles. Here we have the coronary artery. It connects to the aorta and runs across the front surface of the heart. This coronary artery supplies oxygenated blood to the heart muscle. A blockage to this coronary artery will cause a heart attack. We took a picture of this sheep heart before I clean it up so you can see in the pictures what it looks like for the heart when its arteries are covered with fat. Next, we are going to use our scalpel and scissors to cut open this heart so the four chambers and other interior parts will become more obvious. Now we have this heart open, all the four chambers and valves can be observed. You can see here the thickness differences of the left ventricle and the right ventricle. The left ventricle has thicker muscle because it has to pump the oxygenated blood from the lungs to the whole body. Meanwhile, the right ventricle is thinner because it only pumps the deoxygenated blood to the lungs. Now between the ventricles and the arteriums, there are valves that keep the blood flowing in one direction. Between the right atrium and the ventricle, there is a tricuspid valve. And the valve between the left atrium and the left ventricle is called the bicuspid valve, also known as the mitral valve. The fibrous cords here that connect the bicuspid and tricuspid to the papillary muscle of the heart are called the heart strings. There are two other valves called semilunar valves. Think of them as twin valves. One is between the left ventricle and the aorta and is called the aortic valve. The other is in between the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery and is called the pulmonary valve. They keep the blood from flowing back into the ventricles. The muscle over here between the right and the left ventricles is the interventricular septum. On the surface of the walls of the ventricles, you see the ridges and folds. These are called trabeculae carniae. Before we end this video, let's summarize how the heart works to pump the blood in the body. The deoxygenated blood enters the right atrium of the heart through the inferior and superior vena cava. The blood enters the right ventricle, passing through a tricuspid valve. From the right ventricle, the blood exits through the pulmonary valve and enters the pulmonary artery, then split through the left and right pulmonary arteries to be carried to the lungs. The oxygenated blood from the lungs is then carried back to the left atrium of the heart through the pulmonary veins and then enters the left ventricle passing through the bicuspid valve also called the mitral valve. From the left ventricle the blood exits through the aortic valve and enters the aorta to be distributed to the whole body. That's all I have for you today. I hope you've had a great time learning about the heart. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Take care and I will see you in the next video.